Good evening. I'm Mary Howell Rayford, coming to you from East Point, Michigan. And I'm sitting here in my little corner space of my kitchen. But regardless of the very simple, very plain backdrop of this message, I want people to pay attention, especially our young people. It is extremely important that our young people know history, not just Black history, but the history of this nation, how we came to be, and they need to be able to value their own lives and never allow anyone else to make them feel like they are less than. This is important because until we reach a place where everyone knows that they have value, and I'm not talking about thinking, I'm saying no, that you have value, that you are worth something, and that you should never allow anyone to make you think you are worthless or that you have no value. One of the most important things that's happening right now in this upcoming election is that our value as a black people um, is on the ballot. And some people say, well, I didn't see that, especially for those who've already voted. The value of the black community is on the ballot. And we see that if people paid attention to the debate Tuesday night with Trump's refusal to denounce white supremacy. It is already a very known fact that our lives are not considered that valuable because of his attitudes and because of the attitudes that are almost inherent in a number of people across the nation. And that fact is evident in some of the police actions that we've seen in which people, especially black males, have died. We have a situation right now where a young black woman was killed in her own bed, and yet, (laughs) oddly enough, a grand jury thought it was more important to find the people who shot into an apartment building, uh, apartment next door, more important than charging the person who took a life. That's unreal. It's unacceptable. And it's on the ballot. I know there are so many young Black people who have been convinced that their vote won't matter. And I'm here to tell you, it will matter if you vote. If you don't, it won't. It's real simple. You either get up the courage, knowledge, whatever, and go vote. Our lives are dependent and rest on this ballot. Don't take my word for it. Get involved in the news. Get involved in some of the political action groups. Get involved and understand that the future of all black people, you, my children, their children's children, for generations to come, all are on this ballot. Because I'm here to tell you this one very important thing. If Joe Biden is not elected president, chances are our democracy is lost forever. So we cannot afford to risk losing our democracy because if we do, you won't get another chance to have a choice to vote. This is how dictators work. They tell you what you can or cannot do, and there is no ifs or ands or buts about it. You're left with nothing other than following the dictates, in this case, of a narcissistic pathological liar. Trump does not care about black people. He's proving that over 
and over again. And for all of those who have been unfortunately entangled with, enticed by people like Candace Owens or John James or just to name a few, Darrell in Ohio and this other person that I can't even remember his name. That's how important he is to me. But they all lied about Trump in 2016. They're still lying about Trump. And let me explain to you that liars don't change that easily. Trump has never accepted responsibility for anything he's ever said or done, and he's not going to now. This is why he could not denounce white supremacy when specifically asked to do so. Don't take my word for it. Go back and find a clip of that debate. But this is not the first time. He denied even knowing David Duke, 2016. Now he claims he doesn't know who the Proud Boys are. That's a liar for you. They never acknowledge anything. Trump's whole methodology, his whole strategy for existing is to deny, deflect, distract. He will never accept responsibility for the things that he do. Even now, with over 204 100,000 people, Americans, dead. He's still blaming China. Now, I don't hold him responsible for the virus itself, but I do hold him responsible for the fact that he knew from the beginning just how deadly this virus was, and yet he did nothing and continually lied to the American public. Now, If you're a liar and you trust liars, oh well. But if you're not a liar and believe that the truth will set you free, pay attention. Vote for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and every other Democrat on your ballot. If we don't elect senators who will represent the people and not the president, we're going to be stuck in a situation where they will simply obstruct everything Joe Biden wants to do, just like Mitch McConnell did with Obama. Mitch McConnell promised he would obstruct everything Obama wanted to do, and that's exactly what he did. It's time out for playing games with folks' lives. Black, white, I don't care. No one has a right to play with our lives. And as it stands, people of color have the most to lose with another four years. Actually, it wouldn't be another four years. It would be for as long as he and the retrumplicans wanted him to be there. That's what happens with a dictatorship. Young people, Google it. Government. Civics, dictatorships, authoritarian governments, our democracy, what a republic really means. And let me tell you something, there are a whole lot of folks who've gotten that word mixed up with thinking that because the United States is a republic, it's a type of governance, it does not mean that we are all republicans. The form of government that we have It's a democracy where people have an opportunity to voice their opinions freely, and we have elections. If we don't bother to vote in this election, this may be the last chance we get. I don't know how, I really don't know how much more emphatically I can say that. This election is important, and I hope that somewhere along the way, that either by watching this short video or by someone telling you about it, you'll realize that, yes, black lives matter. They really do. The lives of every person in this country matter. 
but we will never see a change in attitude of so many people and in policies established by elected representational government unless we vote and put the right people in office. We, the people, must exercise our rights to vote and elect the person and people in the Senate and Congress who will do the right thing. Not the party thing, but the right thing for all the people. We have to do it. And I encourage every one of you, if you have not registered to vote, take care of it. You can register the day of the election. You can get an absentee ballot, you know, and vote right then. Take care of it. But don't wait till November 3rd because it's already established by what Trump has said when he told the Proud Boys to stand back and stand by what he has planned. He will use his supporters to intimidate voters on November 3rd. So get there before then. In Michigan, you can vote right now. In other states, they also have early voting. They also have absentee ballots being used in most states. And when you get your ballot, make sure you read it, follow the instructions, fill in the oval or the square or whatever it is completely, sign the return envelope, and get it back in. Get it back in by the end of this month, by October 31st. Think about it. If we don't do what we need to do by Halloween, our life will be a disastrous, horrifying Halloween for the rest of our lives. Think of it that way. Now, I really didn't mean to preach, but I had to get this point across. We don't have any time to waste or lose. For the sake of all that's beautiful and loving and caring in this country, in our homes, in our families, in our communities, for all of that, please go vote. Go vote. Go vote and vote blue. We need to be able to have a majority in the Senate in the Senate to make a difference. We really need that. We need to have or keep the House just the way it is or improve on the numbers. Every state, local election, county is important. Because when we don't put the right people in at the local level, it tends to creep up to the upper levels of government. And we end up with the wrong people making decisions for us. Now, I know some of you young people don't like rules. You don't like, you know, um, the regulation, the laws. And I know in, in, until, you, when you, until you turn 18, you really can't stand the house rules. But you know what? In this situation, once you turn 18, for all the laws, except your parents' home, that you don't like in your local community, in your federal government, you can have a voice in determining who is actually going to establish those laws that will impact your life. That's what you have to think about. This election is going to impact your life your future, and whether or not we even have a planet that will sustain us. So get busy. Find out everything that's important and realize that you as a person are the most important issue on this ballot. That's the way I'm looking at it, and that's why I've already voted. So I want you to get busy, take care of the things you say you care about, because if we don't get it right in 2020, we may never have another opportunity to do so. I'm Mary Hall Rayford. 
and I'll probably be coming to you again time and time again until this election is over. And even afterwards, if we find out that you didn't care enough to get out and vote. This is not third party voting time. This is Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, all Democrats voting time. I hope you do what's right for all of us. Until next time, enjoy the rest of your evening.